Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to another exciting edition of third grade St. Joseph on the Brandywine Religious Education. My name is Miss D. I hope everyone is having a wonderful Christmas season, getting into the spirit. We are going to be covering Advent today. So we are going to start, as always, with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. My little Lord Jesus, I love you and thank you for this Advent season. Please help me to understand all that you have done for me. Your loving mother held you in her heart and brought you into this world. Help me to do the same. My loving Jesus, I choose you this Advent as my King and my God. Draw me close to you and help me to see my sins so that I can change the things that you want me to change. Mother Mary, pray for me this Advent so that I may do all that God wants me to do. You said yes to all God asked of you. Please pray for me to do the same. Amen. So I hope everyone is having a wonderful Christmas and Advent season. Well, not Christmas, Advent season. Um, we are all getting ready for Jesus. Hopefully everyone has gotten their trees put up and put up decorations and gotten themselves totally in the spirit. So today we're going to pretty much cover all of Advent. It's going to be a wrapped up view. Um, we are going to start with celebrating Jesus and when we first learned that Jesus would come again. So Advent is, the church year begins with Advent. It's really the beginning of our liturgical year. The season of Advent lasts about four weeks. During Advent, we get ready for Christmas. We pray and wait for Jesus to come more and more into our world. We prepare our hearts so that Jesus can come more and more into our own lives. We light candles on an Advent wreath to show we are waiting for Jesus and the light of the world. So, about 500 years before Jesus was born, Babylonians came to the Holy Land. They wrecked Jerusalem and the temple. The soldiers caught most people and marched them to Babylon as prisoners. After 40 years, the Persian king, Cyrus, beat the Babylonians in a war. He told the exiled people they could go home to Israel. Isaiah promised them that God would lead them through the desert and the mountains. The people work hard to rebuild their homes, the temple, and their and the temple. Sometimes they felt hopeless. Isaiah helped them remember that God was with them. When people are forced to leave their homes and their country, they are in exile. Many of the exiled Jews thought God had forgotten them, but the prophet Isaiah reminded them that God loved them. Isaiah wrote prayers for them. So. Um, the key word I want you to remember there is Advent. Advent is the time of the church year when Christians prepare for the birth of Jesus and his second coming. So who helped with Jesus? Who helped to tell? Isaiah obviously did. But there was another person just as important who also spent time praising God and telling of the coming of Jesus. And his name was John the Baptist. There was a man once named Zechariah who served in the temple. His wife was Elizabeth. They were good people who kept God's commandments, but they didn't have any children and were already old. One day, Zechariah was in the temple. He saw an angel by the altar. Zechariah was confused and afraid. The angel said, Do not be afraid. God has heard your prayers. Your wife will have a son. You must name him John. He will be a special helper to God. The Holy Spirit will be with him all of his life. John will help people get ready for the Lord. Zachariah said, how can I believe this? My wife and I are too old. The angel said, I am Gabriel and I was sent by God to tell you this good news. Since you do not believe me, you will not be able to talk until God's promise comes true. When Zachariah left the temple, he could not talk. The people knew he had seen a vision from God. Zachariah's wife Elizabeth soon told him she was going to have a baby. Her cousin Mary surprised her by coming for a visit. When Elizabeth heard Mary's voice at her door, her baby jumped with joy inside her. Mary was going to have a special baby too. When Elizabeth and Zachariah's son was born, people thought they would name him Zachariah, but John Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. They asked Zachariah what he wanted to name his son, and he wrote, John is his name. Right away, Zachariah could talk again. He started praising God. When John grew up, he went to the desert to prepare for Jesus. John the Baptist used water to baptize people who were sorry for their sins. John said that John, Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. 
We are baptized with water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So John the Baptist came before Jesus. He was a cousin of Mary and he knew that Jesus was coming. And he was sent to tell us, to be a special messenger, to tell us that very soon, very soon, Jesus was coming to help us. So John prepares for the Messiah. God sent a man named John to tell the people of the Messiah so they would be ready. Who are you? Are you the great leader God promised us? No, I am not the Messiah. I am not. Tell us who you are. I am telling everyone to make the path straight for the one God is sending. I am not good enough to undo his sandal strap. People at that time thought that John the Baptist was the Messiah because he was so godly and he was baptizing people. But he said, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just preparing the way. So the word we want to take away from here is Messiah. It's a Hebrew word that means the anointed one. The word for anointed one in Greek is Christos. Jesus Christ means Jesus the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. And he is a great leader and teacher that God had promised to send his people. Jesus teaches us to be like him. We act like him when we choose to, to do what is right, love and forgive and care for one another. And then that brings us to Mary, his mother. We still have many holidays and feast days that celebrate Mary because she had such an important role. And she really listened to God and said yes. So Mary lived in a town called Nazareth. She was engaged to Joseph, who belonged to the family of David. One day, the angel of Gabriel came to Mary. Mary was afraid and wondered what the angel was doing. She, the angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. You will have a baby and give him the name Jesus. Mary said, how can this happen? I am not even married. The angel Gabriel told her, God will send you the Holy Spirit to you, and your child will be God's son and mary said i will do what she asks so that was the annunciation the annunciation is when the angel gabriel told mary that god called her to be the mother of his son jesus so god invited mary to be mother of his son and she said yes and mary helped bring jesus to us and we bring jesus to the world through our love and actions so that was a lot to cover. Um, I think that when we think about Christmas, we think about all of these things and all that preparation. And that's why we spend the four weeks lighting the candles and getting ready and making things beautiful because it really is a very big celebration in our church and in our time. So... I wanted to go over, excuse me, thought I had it open, but I don't. I wanted to go over okay. Born of the Virgin Mary. Mary is the mother of Jesus. Mary was a young woman who lived in Nazareth. She was engaged to a carpenter named Joseph. God chose Mary to be the mother of his son, Jesus. God protected Mary from original sin, and Mary never sinned herself. Mary was full of grace. Mary loved God very much, and she always wanted to do God's will. Mary said yes to God's plan. Mary is the mother of Jesus, who is God. So Mary is truly the mother of God, and really mother to us all. I know I pray to her all the time because I just feel closely connected to her. So let's... I would wish we were in class. I still do because I like to have conversations about traditions. What do we do in our own house to welcome Jesus and to get ready? And everybody has a spin. Everybody has like their own tradition. Um, and sometimes they last all year. I particularly, whenever I go to a new location, I buy a Christmas ornament. And it's to track where me and my son have been. Um, and I pretty much now have just a whole tree of the different parts and places in the world I've been and I show that at Christmas to see that I'm well-traveled and that I'm bringing my light and, 
and seeing the world and experiencing the things I can experience. Uh, and that's a fun tradition that him and I really enjoy. Though sometimes it's hard to find ornaments, especially in odd times of the year. I'm sure you all have your own traditions that are special to you and to your family. Uh, my son goes to with his dad to Feast of the Seven Fishes. It's an Italian tradition where Christmas Eve night they cook a meal of seven fishes. But there are other things. And I, I, I really liked when I found out about Christ the King that I had like a fun fact. I have two fun facts for you guys. So... The Christmas wreath is a symbol of love and eternal life. The Christmas wreath is representative of the crown of thorns that Jesus wore. Eventually, the colors of Christmas, red, green, and gold, were added. Red is said to represent the blood of Jesus. Green is supposed to celebrate, symbolize life. And gold stands for royalty and light. And the evergreen foliage used to make the Christmas wreath symbolizes the continuity, continuity of life and nature even in the darkest days of winter. So that's something I did not know. I did not know the Christmas wreath was representative of the crown of thorns. So there's something I learned new. And the other thing, caroling is based on the tradition of wassailing. Have you ever wondered why people go door to door singing carols? The tradition is based on the English custom of wassailing, which was a tradition to toast to someone's good health and fortune. St. Francis of Assisi took this tradition and converted it to the modern form of caroling. So that was something else I did not know. Okay. Whew. So hard to just keep talking. I miss having little people in front of me to go back and forth with. I really do. I'm not going to ever probably stop saying that this whole year. So I am going to be sending mom and dad coloring sheets. You do not have to do them. This is just for fun. You have no idea. I save everything my son gives me and it comes out at Christmas and I like tape it and hang it places it just makes me happy so if maybe you know you're having some time you could color something very nice have a holly jolly christmas and give that to mom you know that would probably make her very happy or you can just do it for your own for fun i will have a video next week but it's just going to be like a merry christmas woo, you know all celebration fun sweater um kind of time i am wearing my um I'll stand up wearing my Captain America Christmas sweater. One of the fun things I do in my school is every day I wear a different Christmas shirt from Monday through Friday. Um, I still do it on Zoom so that we all get into the holiday spirit. And it, can't, it, it can sometimes just be a plain green shirt or a plain red shirt and I just put things together. Um, but that's usually one of the things that I do to like pump myself up because I really do enjoy Christmas. So... That is all I have for today. I hope everyone is ready to enjoy the season. I hope everyone is safe and happy. And I hope everyone carves out maybe new traditions this year if you can't do the ones you had done. Maybe you could try um, helping mom with the Christmas cards. Or, because um, it would actually be kind of cute if maybe on the back of the envelope, you, you know, maybe made a, made a wreath now that we know what that means. Now that we know what it symbolizes, that would actually be kind of cute. It'd be very helpful. So I hope everyone's going to have a wonderful week and a wonderful Christmas. I will, like I said, I'll have a video next week of just Merry Christmas. So I look forward to the next video. Goodbye, everybody.